Diane, thank you so much for calling from Lexington, Kentucky. You're listening on Real Life Radio. Hello, Diane. Hi. Hi, thank you for calling. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about this. Uh, Some background. I am a returning Catholic after 40 years. Um, I have three daughters and sons-in-laws and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. This issue troubles me greatly. I think abortion, though, should be... It has to be very rare and safe and legal. I think women, it's between a woman and her relationship with God and the, her husband or a partner, but it troubles me greatly. Okay, Diane, I, I think your position on this issue is actually a very common one. I think most people who are for abortion, they don't like abortion, and in your words, it does trouble them a lot. And they and the idea of it being safe, legal, and rare, I think that was something that uh, President uh, Bill Clinton really espoused thought in the early 90s, that safe, legal, and rare language. My question would, for you would be this. Why do you think abortion should be rare? What is it specifically about abortion that troubles you? Ooh. Um, well, I... I don't like it. <laughs> right, but why Why don't when, you like it? What's, was, what's specifically I, about abortion? Well, I, I do believe it's a life. I'm uncertain as to what you know, point. I, I read everything that I can. Mm-hmm. When I was a young married woman, I was mm-hmm. pregnant unexpectedly, and mm-hmm. I went to Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. Um, they did not in any way you know, try to sway me. And um, I took their literature and their information, and I chose not to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. And I would not have one. But I also know I'm a privileged person. I'm white, upper middle class. Mm -hmm. I have financial resources. Uh, And being pro-birth but not pro-child, some of the same people who are so against abortion will cut funding for programs to help young children and babies. Okay, so you're saying it's inconsistent for someone to say, I'm in favor of helping kids, but they only want to help kids uh, before they're born, not after. But, yeah. Diane, wouldn't it be equally consistent for people at Planned Parenthood and others who say they want to help kids you know, in pre-K and kindergarten and school lunches? Is it inconsistent for people to say, I want to help all these born kids but then turn around and say it should be legal to kill unborn kids. Isn't that an even worse inconsistency? Hmm. I don't know. Honestly, uh, I, I would have to think about that more. Well, uh, oh, well uh, let's, have... let's, let's think it through. I mean, I, I, it seems it... To, it's inconsistent to say, I value children. We should help children. So we give kids universal pre-K, school lunches, vaccines. We help all the born kids— and we say we're we really want to help children, but then for the unborn kids, we say, well, people should have the right to end your life for any reason. It doesn't work, does it? I mean, if you, I can see logically. I mean, I'm no match for you in that regard. But as a woman, um, I think there would be less suffering in that being's life to be terminated. Uh in the first three months or five months than to be born into a drug, perhaps drug addiction or no parents or horrible child abuse. Uh Um, But, you know, it's easy. To uh me, it just seems easier for people to say, yeah, have that baby, you know, go ahead. But there's not the support, Trent. Employers don't support. Single women who are pregnant now are being fired. Right, right. And Diane, but let's... support women and children. But let, let's look at yeah, this. Right. Think of it this way. Even if we can't figure out what the best solution is to a certain problem, when we face a problem, we can always say, okay, there's at least some solutions that are off the table. We just cannot consider them. So for example, let's say there's women having children they can't take care of. One solution to that problem would be finding all of these women and sterilizing them. I mean, they do that in countries like China today. Or... Right killing the children after they're born, let's say the mom is doing just fine financially, but then after birth loses her job and starts doing drugs and her six-month-old child is caught in the middle of this, I mean, I think you would agree with me, right, we shouldn't kill a six-month-old born baby who's probably going to have a pretty rough life. I would. 
I, get, I would. You would what? I would agree with you. Okay, yeah. thank goodness. <laughs> I thought you yeah. Good, good. You would no, agree. I the six-month-old born baby we should protect. And so I, to me, I just want to be consistent in all this. Yeah, these are difficult situations. And you and I would agree, you know, if someone has a born baby they can't take care of, that's hard. And we, sometimes we don't know what the best way is to help that woman and baby. But we at least know we shouldn't help the mom kill the baby. To me, if the child is still human before birth, and I see no reason, no reason at all to think they're not, the only reason we justify abortion that we justify ending the child's life before they're born is because we don't see them, and so we don't have to confront that that grisly alternative. Do, do you think that might be the case? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, I if mean, you, I mean, I would recommend just, why don't you uh, give it some thought, and you can always pick up uh, my book, Persuasive Pro-Life, online to look at. So yeah, Diane, I would just recommend just keep thinking about this issue and really try to think of at the end of the day, who are we as human beings? Do we matter because how big we are, how old we are, whether we're born or not? Or do we just matter just because we're human, we have human parents, and even when we were really, really little, we, we, should, be, we should be protected? So yeah, so please just think about that, and um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for calling in today. I sure will. All righty.